So very next thing that I want to probably ask you is, how do you go about building that first set of members on the founding team? Because like we spoke about the co-founder and we spoke about the rapport that uh, one needs to have with the co-founder. And post this comes basically building the idea out in actual sense for which you need a lot of trusted people to join you. So how do you get them as excited? Yeah, sharing vision is one thing, but how do you basically build that initial team? And uh, what did you learn from your experience of building a team, especially during pandemic? Sure. So let's just answer this question very practically, right? Um, what makes anybody get excited about joining a company? Of course, it's the money, it's the birth, um, you know, or representing yourself as with the Microsoft or, uh, you know, um, the test class of the world. So many things when it comes to the usual uh, workforce selection. Right? I've been mm-hmm. that person, so there's nothing against that. But when it comes to a startup, where which the name is also not even heard, right? Uh, there's a new company just registered. She's in fact a first time entrepreneur. And for somebody to trust on this and then come, it takes a lot and then quit a, a regular job and then believe this is going to work out, probably have a pay cut and then join. It takes a lot. So bringing such people also takes a lot. And then if you are able to bring four or five people who believes in the vision, and adds and spreads that value, uh, I think everything else just follows because these four people are going to hire the next 10 people and the cycle just flows. And uh, one thing, there are some values, even when it is a very small startup, there are some values that we strongly enforce in people about mutual respect and how people treat the other people when it comes to empathy at work. There are certain things that uh, we enforce really, really strong. There's no, uh, you know, senior, junior concept, but then it's quite a lot of respect for each other and the work that they do uh, for the company. So with that, I think it was definitely difficult to hire that four folks. And those four folks, you know, you interview 40 people and then you pick one. It is like you hire so many people. And then you you know this person probably isn't even suiting the culture. So, uh, you know, probably not sharing the same vision as you had. And then they choose to leave and then there is a void and then you hire somebody. So initially, definitely it was difficult, but I think we were lucky. Um, our employee number one, she still works with us. She used to be my college friend and, you know, she brought in more people who believed, and these are women who took a career break. Uh, there's, a, there's a girl who's tried UPSC for four or five years. Super smart, but probably couldn't crack the UPSC. Still adds a lot of value. She's amazing. There's a dentist, and uh, she wanted to pursue something on that, but, you know, uh, she came and So from very, very different cultures and different workforces, people came. But one thing that's very, um, you know, unique for everyone and uh, that matched with mine and more is a value system. Mm-hmm. But how am I going to add value? This is the question that everyone keeps asking in respect to if she was a, a homemaker or if she was a doctor or if she was a new aspirant or, you know, anybody for that matter. So I think that's sort of worked and it's quite a journey. I think I answered this question earlier as well. Uh, I can tell you about my route, but if you are going to start up tomorrow, your route is going to be completely different. On yeah. day one, you could probably find the perfect 10 people also. Might happen. Uh, so, you know, the entire map, nobody knows. And we will have to find our own roots. 